Okay, got the fender off. Uh, working on grinding out some of those welds. See a little daylight through some of the welds. So we're going to be doing some touch-up work. I'm going to fill in all those molding holes. And I'm going to fill in that antenna hole. So, that's it. Let's keep working and see what happens. I think that's it for today. I went through a bunch of the welds. Uh, I think I got it's probably at least 99% of them. I mean, I got to be careful what I do now because I'm just warping up the panel and straightening it. You know, it's not even on the car. Uh, I filled in all the molding holes. That I put a plate underneath it. I wasn't. I wasn't going through that aggravation. So, I'll seal that up. That definitely will not be an issue. It's not even in the area where water would hit. So, the main part of the fender I did with these 50 grit discs. But anywhere you got near, like the well and around, and anywhere you got near an edge, I did it with a fine brown disc. So I'm not even sure what these numbers are on these 3Ms. But they're fine, you use them to take gaskets off or whatever it is. Because I didn't want to destroy any of the edges. So, I think that's it. I mean, the majority of the stuff you're looking at is the 50 grit. Because the majority of the stuff you're looking at right now is going to be bond out. And that's reality. I guess by the time you get the fender wall back in and you get that seam in the back and the seam in the front, and the low spots from filling in all the molding holes, it's bondo. So, I'm trying to keep it as thin as possible. But this is a tricky one for me, guys. It's not as easy as when I did those quarter panels. You know what I mean? People think it's easier. You know, the people I talk to, oh, it's only a fender. You converted it to a two-door. I don't know. This thing just wants to heat up and move. <laughs> So, I want to fully strip this thing down and uh, epoxy prime it before I put it back on the car. So, I'm going to hit it over. I'm going to go over that with a DA. Get rid of some of the 50 grit sand and marks on it. So, but uh, I mean, that'll be at the top of the fender. I don't see any dings in it at this point. You know, but by the time you smooth that out, that's going to be in this vicinity here. So, got some of the low spot out here. Ooh, got a couple you know, dimples from doing it. I did my best, but it's definitely out further. Okay, you know, you still got it's a little low right in this vicinity, but this, at this point, there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, there's not much you could do. Fender wasn't designed for this. So, and like I said in my last video, uh, next week I will be picking up a left side fender with molding holes, of course. What I'm getting is a complete fender, and I'm getting a fender that was cut at this line, then like straight down, complete, which would be good for like, you know, fixing a wheel well. <coughs> the back corner looks good and stuff like that. So, gave it to me for a super duper reasonable price, same guy. I got those fenders from, and that's sport about. That's actually across the street from his house when he picked it up. So, a little like three quarter driving. Holy shit. You know how much gray hair I got after that trip? Sorry, Mike, I had to say it. Did you have a trailer at 90 miles an hour? And weave? You could ask him, I got out, I kissed the ground. I think when we went over the Throgs Neck Bridge and we stopped briefly. Oh no, that was when that was when I towed this wagon home. That was right. That's right. But <laughs> when we picked up this wagon, we picked up this wagon from my buddy in Connecticut. Uh, two and a half hour trip, I guess it is. You know, by car, or an hour and a half by Mike. So we went up there. Weather was beautiful. Okay, and up where Tom lives, there was a place called Corey's. I guess you'd have to be in the vicinity to know what it is, but it was like, it was a hamburger, you know, hot dog place. It was like in a lot. 
and it used to be an actual drive to uh, drive up drive whatever you call it, where they come up to your car but as time went on that part changed they had awesome food they had cruise nights there and car shows and it was like I don't know 15 minutes heading home towards Tom's house we load up the car it was like a 90 degree day and like 200 percent humidity from the second we got out of the car we were drenched in sweat so we load up the car we're on our way just as we're pulling into Corey's, it unleashes. I mean, it unleashes like bucket full of water at a time, you know, type of drops. So we get up, you know, under the canopy, we get our food, we eat. Weather lets down a little bit, still rainy. And that was the first time I ever trailed on the highway where the ABS came on when we were towing. And he acted like, you know, he shrugged it off like I wasn't. I shouldn't have noticed the sound of the ABS and the truck being pushed by my car. <laughs> and like I said, when we got over the Throgs Neck Bridge, I made the suggestion that we check the straps. I got out, I was kissing the ground. And I still had another half hour normal time, 20 minute mic time to get home. So, yeah. So, I don't know if I'm ever pinned in my car and they have to cut me out of it, I'll have Mike come with the trailer and get me to the hospital because that'll be quicker than the EMS cutting me with the jaws of life. So, but then again, it's all good, Mike. It's just the way you drive. So, with that, I think I'm gonna call it quits. I gotta clean up here. There's all that dust, dust on me and in me and on me and around me. So, that's it. At least I got something done today. So. pushing on it. Yeah, like I said, that's it guys. Happy YouTubing.